we've been presenting Getting Started as a Health Researcher series. And today we want to discuss a topic of interest, which is authorship. For the early and young career researchers, this is a really important concept that needs to be discussed as early as possible and understood to avoid any misconceptions. Before we start, we want to remind you to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like our content. We look forward to reading um, what you have to share. A little bit about me. As you probably know by now, I'm Ulrich Selin Kamunye. I have published extensively in the fields of neurosurgery, medical education, bibliometrics, as well as global surgery. I have editorial positions at major journals, including neurosurgery journals. I have research experience uh, in terms of training, as well as um, positions, and have men, been a mentor to uh, modern therapy mentees. Authorship positions and roles. Today, health research uses the ICMJE authorship criteria, which are available online. You can definitely type ICMJE authorship and you'll find the criteria. They are very straightforward. They determine that to be an author, to be considered an author, one has to make significant contributions to the research. Uh, one has to contribute to writing the manuscript. One has to be ready to bear responsibility for the manuscript and um, vetting that manuscript, definitely. Now, one of the problems that exists about determining authorship is often the first criteria, which is determining what qualifies as significant contribution to the research. For medical students and early career researchers, it's not uncommon to find oneself contributing to a research article or paper and not being an author on that paper. Um, often, authorship is determined by the senior person on that paper. Um, and when that is the case, it can be very demoralizing to find that what we have contributed significantly to research without being able to uh, get that credit. And that is unfortunate, but it definitely does happen. Uh, when it does happen, I definitely recommend going against um, some of these people because they are very senior. They have, usually they have some form of power over the, um, the, the early career researcher. And so that might not necessarily be in the early career researcher's interest in the long run. Or even trying to write, I've seen people trying to write to journals. That's never a great thing because it creates a very big situation, a lot of noise, and that just doesn't work well. I would say it is important to identify these people as early as possible. Um, one of the things I recommend is going online, looking at their publications and seeing if they've had a habit of working with junior folks and giving them some kind of credit. If that's not the case, I would say stay away from them um, and then find someone that will definitely be there to recognize your contributions. Also ask around, with, um, speak with people who've worked with them, ask, to, ask your questions to many people simply because one perspective is never enough. Now, talking about the different authorship positions, which differ from roles, we have first authorship, generally speaking, which is often the person that has contributed significantly uh, more than the other authors. We have the senior last other position. These are people that contribute significantly, but because they are more senior, they are almost in a mentorship role or position on that paper. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, these senior folks might not have contributed even to the paper and they get put on paper. So that, um, that definitely happens, whether that's in high income countries or low and middle income countries. Normally, it shouldn't, but it, it definitely does in some departments, for example, all research that goes out of the department has to have the head of the department's name. Um, that's how it happens there. And 
it can be a challenge if you try to get people to change that habit or mentality. Then there is the corresponding author. The corresponding author communicates with the journal and editorial board. This often is either the first author or the last author, but it can be anyone really. Um, the person submitting would usually be the corresponding author. Some journals allow for the submitting author to be different from the corresponding author, in which case it can be someone else, but that is basically a point of focus, a liaison. Um, if you're not a first author, a senior or last author, then you're probably a middle author. But generally speaking, more credit is given to first authorship and senior authorship than middle authorship. And it is there is an understanding that if you're the first author on a paper, then you've contributed significantly to that paper. It is almost like your brainchild and you put in the sweat, blood, sweat, sweat and tears. Um, and why, why do people really care about it? If you think about when you're citing a paper, you generally cite the first person's name and continue with et al, which means and collaborators. Um, and so that's the, probably why that, that is important. Now, we're talking about authorship roles, there are different ways one can contribute to research. So LCVA has this credit criteria, which I find very helpful. Once again, you can type on Google LCVA credit criteria to find uh, the different roles that one can play in research. There are some that are very straightforward, things like data collection and curation, data analysis, generating visuals that would be graphics, as well as financing and supervising project administration, some that are less uh, obvious. And so it is important to get familiar with those roles, um, not only for you so that you know when you've contributed significantly based on that, but also um, based on, bit also for your team, because there is a tendency for people working on a project to think that they've contributed um, a lot and that contributing a lot should translate into a more significant role or position on the authorship list. Uh, this can be a challenge when one does not know what others have done. And so if you've worked without seeing what the others contributed, it might feel like you should be a first author, whereas if your work is put into perspective with everyone else's, you're probably a middle author. I recommend that when you're working on a project with numerous people, try as much as possible to be transparent. One way to do that definitely is to work on a collaborative platform that records contributions. And my favorite would be Google Drive. So whether that's uh, using Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Forms, just because you get some kind of historic tracking of what everyone has done. And that way you're able to justify why one person gets a better position than another. Another thing that is really important in my opinion is having a spreadsheet to track everybody's role and maybe using a points-based system where one tallies all these different credit roles and um, finds out who needs to be first author, second or third, um, then I think the last authorship usually is not a tough question simply because it's often seniority that gets the last authorship. Um, authorship is really can be a thorn in your side as a researcher. I think you should definitely read through this information, be honest and open as soon as you start the project. Don't rush to discuss your fantastic ideas and how you're going to change the world and all of that. First and foremost, discuss authorship, how you're going to go about determining the different authorship contributions and positions is very important because it may make or break your research. You can do fantastic research, but if people do not agree about the authorship position, your paper might find itself 
somewhere in a folder for years without ever getting submitted or published. So please take the time to do that. This was all we had for today. Please remember to like, share, comment, and uh, definitely subscribe to our channel. We have more content like this coming your way, and we hope that you enjoyed this.